This is it. Don't mess up. Victor Alvarez, uh, co-owner of Induction Performance, um, and today we're going to talk about Booger. We went down this path in 2020 with Booger to make a bunch of changes, come up with some new, new cool products, you know, like test some new stuff on that car, and the quest for sixes began. So FL2K20, we right before that event, we were trying to get it all sorted out, ran into some issues. that time we kind of decided to take a small break, step back, figure everything out instead of trying to rush to make an event. So we took our time, we started working on the car and we started to do some no time stuff. We had great success and in that time we were able to really work on the car dial in the short track, learn the car. The car was becoming its normal self again. It was very reliable, it was running good, it was running good times, um, but nobody got to see what it was running, which is kind of the fun of no time that you don't know what the guy next to you runs. But it got to a point where we were like, all right, maybe it's time to, uh, to show the world what Booger does. And uh, we put the quarter mile rear gear back in it. We uh, freshened up the engine and we went to uh, TX2K. We got to TX2K. That event's been a big deal for all of us for a long time. You know, I've been going to TX2K since 2007. Got out there untested. First round qualifying was our first pass. We had a little hiccup. Got the car on the trans brake, car turned off. Once the nitrous came on, it had like a nitrous backfire. I guess we had a nitrous solenoid that was going bad. Gathered myself up and car turned off, I turned it back on. I knew that the, the tree dropped, but I hadn't broke the beams. So I purged the nitrous, checked everything out, tried to still save the run, and I did. But in that time, a track worker actually walked out in front of the beam and broke the beam with his foot because uh, he was coming to check on me, I guess. So we made a run, it was a killer run, but the only thing that was good from that run was the mile an hour. We went like 205 mile an hour. So we all knew that that was our first six, but we didn't get the time slip. We had previously been pretty fast in the eighth mile, so we knew the car was capable of going sixes, but until you print that slip, it's it's nothing, you know? It's like, oh, I can run sixes now. So they, the track did the right thing. They let us get another run, so we turned the car over real quick. The guys at the shop, they, they were killing it in Texas. They were on it, put transmission cooler on, charge the battery, change the bottle. We thought we fixed that issue, but we still had it. So we go back up there, car does the same thing. This time they knew to step back. I you know, gathered myself up, turned the car on, made sure everything was good. Made the pass, let go of the button, and the car left, it left good. And at that point, I knew, I was like, all right, this is it, don't mess up. six it was like a I think we went 692 at 204.9 so huge celebration everybody was happy the owner of the car Dan from the shop south was beyond happy um, he actually got to make it out to the trip or to, to Texas we've all been working on this and fighting for this for a while Dan had a baby I had a baby I stopped driving the car for a little bit so kind of just all the stars aligned and we, we accomplished our goal. And then from there, we uh, we had to figure out this nitrous issue, which we ended up figuring out. And uh, we made one more qualifying run. That time, I believe we were qualified number three. It was the heat of the day, track wasn't, you know, what it could be, it wasn't as good as it could be or what we're used to. So we slowed it down a little bit. Um, it went 6.82 at 2.08. us to 
up and getting the number two spot. So at that point we sat out and uh, waited for Eliminations Day. Let me see, what did we do Eliminations Day? I gotta talk about that. It's not good, this is where we broke the shit, hold on, let me think, okay. <laughs> we maintained the number two spot, even though we sat out that last round. Since we were pretty in a good spot, our opponent qualified with like an eight nine or a nine oh, so went out there just, again, just let's get down the track, we don't have to break any records or do anything crazy to, to win this round. And let go of the button, started going, and not sure exactly what broke yet. Truthfully, we haven't taken the car apart, but long story short, a bunch of water came out, um, and the car went for a little bit of a ride. <laughs> that the car just spun the tire so I tried to fire it back up and still finish the run but she was done. One of the things that we know broke and what caused a lot of the issues on the front of the crankshaft uh, crank pulley the uh, the drive for the oil pump broke off like the bolts actually sheared off and that led to a bunch of other things so hopefully it's a quick fix um, I think our eyes are set on a FL2K to uh, come back out and continue to run uh, and show show times instead of no time. So that's it. That's the story um, for Booger. That's how we got our goal of running sixes. Um, thanks to everybody involved, uh, the guys at the shop put in a lot of hours behind the scenes to to make this happen. Um, all the sponsors, the owner of the car, Dan TSS. Without him, we wouldn't be able to do what we've been doing with the car. Um, so now we'll uh, we'll freshen it up and we'll get it ready for uh, FL2K.